Hey, Ryan Michael Galloway again with We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company.com, and we've been talking about the producer and maybe you as a producer and uh, producing your recording project. It's time to talk a little bit about um, some things that um, don't have a whole lot to do with music, and that is the, the business side of what the producer does, the planning and the scheduling. Um, the producer is essentially a project manager, and in one of my lives, I do a lot of project management, not just in um, things like uh, uh, music, but in, in things like uh, oh, uh, the computer world and uh, oh, uh, large uh, fundraising activities and things like that and events. So project management um, rests on three basic legs. You may have seen an old sign that said something like, uh, you might be at a printer or you might see a sign maybe at a cleaners or something like that. It says, uh, you can have it good, fast, and cheap but you can only pick two. Why is that? Because if you have it good and fast, it's not going to be cheap. Because it's going to take a lot of work to get it done fast and good. Uh, you can have it good and cheap, but it's not going to be fast. Because it's going to take, you know, see what I'm saying is that these, these three legs affect each other. Well, in your project management of your, um, your, your recording project, uh, you can manage cost and quality and timeline, basically. And, uh, the cost involves not only the studio, but the personnel, the resources, if you will. So, uh, again, cost, quality, and timeline. Well, we've talked before, but what I want to make sure that you realize is if you go in with a plan and a schedule, even if you don't hit that schedule just right, even if you go a week over, or 20 hours over, or 100 hours over, you will still be in better shape than if you went in with no plan and just meandered around and tried to throw things together. This is for somebody who's got an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money. Even if you have your own recording studio, even if you have your own uh, recording si uh, system in your home, without a plan, without a schedule, you might never get your project done. I mean, it's just going to take a long, long time. Now, um, I, I must admit, if you've got time for it to be a kind of a bucolic, evolving situation, that's great, um, but I do advocate at least per song come up with a schedule. Um, then, uh, you know, uh, that directly relates to cost, how much money you have to spend. And um, now quality, how does quality fit into, say, affecting the cost of the timeline? Well, the more money and the more time you have, the more times you can make an extra shoot, you can re-record the main vocal, you can record that song two and three times and pick the best version, but the less you have in, in the money department and the time department, the more you need to close down um, your aspirations to great quality, unfortunately. And so at some point, you have to say, what is good enough? And generally in a recording, everything's a compromise anyway. So what is it at the point where you can be satisfied with it your audience will be impressed with it, and more important than anything else, that you've succeeded in reinforcing the creation of the song with the recording in such a way that it's going to stick in people's heads and help sell your product and get the word out. So those are some things to think at. Now, there's, well, we'll get back in just a minute, uh, you know, tomorrow night, uh, talking about um, a few other things that, that uh, project managers do. And um, this is not anything I'm inventing. This is all really standard stuff, but stuff that I doubt that you've been exposed to unless, you know, you've uh, got to say a certification in project management or perhaps in record production. So it all fits and it's all going to help you. I am Ryan Michael Galloway. We don't need no stinking record company.com.